Hey guys, this is Georgia with Ancient Aliens and you're listening to that one time I was abducted by aliens with Jamie and Bree. You're listening to that one time I was abducted by aliens. I'm Jamie. I'm Bree, and we're two sides of the coin. Everybody, welcome back to another episode. How are you doing today, Bree? I'm good, Jamie. How are you? I'm always good. We have a special guest here today. We have Jesse here. Jesse, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell everyone about the podcast and what you do. Sure. Um, I'm a member and field investigator through MUFON. I've been with them since 2019. Um, I do investigations with them and on the side. Um, I also run my own podcast. It's called UFO Encounters Worldwide. It's on all, all major pl- podcast platforms. Um, you can also catch my website that has all my information, my work, uh, my travels. It's uh, ufoencountersworldwide.wordpress.com. Um, and the podcast is weekly. It comes out every Wednesday, as well as new content on the website as well. So Hell yeah. Cool. <laughs> and we'll have, How did you we'll... follow your stuff in the descriptions? Oh, yes, of course. Of course. How what did you get into MUFON? Um, so I got a hold of, but it all started with Eric Von Daniken's book, uh, Chariots of the Gods. Um, that got me hooked immediately. And, um, Classic. I was just looking around for an organization to join, you know, and, mm-hmm. and become a part of something more than just myself. Um, and I found MUFON and, and I found that it was a worldwide community with a network of all different kinds of scientists and people in the intelligence field and everybody working and volunteering their time that were really dedicated to the subject. So I wanted to be a part of that. Um, that intrigued me a lot. And did Eric Don, Eric Von Daniken, I can never say his name because it's so long, <laughs> is his book what really got you into this? Or did you start having your experiences and started like looking into books and came upon his? Like how, what kind of brought you into this field? Well, I, I've always had like little sightings myself, um, but I never really knew there was a community that you could go to and, and share all this stuff like UFO Twitter. And I had no idea about any of it. Um, mm-hmm. And then once I read his books, there was some information about different groups in there that were studying the subject. And then that got me, you know, searching to see what I could find. Wow. That's amazing. So for your experiences, how early did that start? And do you remember kind of the first aha, uh-huh, this is definitely aliens moment? Um, it was actually recently, I would say last year, I had my own encounter by myself. I seen a, a UF, two UFOs disappear, but like, right, because I live by, um, by a park and um, different recreation centers. And you always see drones and stuff like that flying around and kites, people flying kites. But mm-hmm. this, it looked like a roaming candle, but it was too straight and they disappeared one by one before the other and um that was my own encounter but then later on this year I had one with my father who was a little bit of a skeptic um we were driving down the street and he actually pointed it out as four objects flying in a formation and I'm very familiar with aircraft I was in the military um I have books that I search and look all over um and these were absolutely nothing that he's ever seen in his lifetime nor have I've ever seen and um you always hear people when they go to take their phone out, their phone freezes or electronics don't work when they're trying to look at uh, different UFO sightings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I had just got a brand new phone a month prior, um, trying to take my phone out and my phone is locked up and I can't take the video of the UFOs. Um, we're trying to chase them. We're trying to follow them. You can hear us in the background in the video, you know, I'm trying to get it. And uh, finally I get it. And you can only see the very last object in the photo. And it was very bland. We couldn't get it. So, but it, that changed everything for me and him, the way we look at it. So that's so cool. So what does your dad think now? Like, what did he say afterwards? Yeah. I'm so interested to hear like what his opinion is now. I first heard him tell somebody about it. I think it was two weeks ago and to hear him say that he knows that it was nothing of this world, nothing that we have, nothing he's ever seen before. And the way he told it was just like, damn, that's all. That's right. Dad, go ahead. (laughs) You know what I mean? It was like really cool to finally have that, you know, that, that, back up backed up from him you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it was have cool. you had Validation. your dad on the podcast yet to talk about it no I talked to him about it he, he's not sure if he wants to do that yet but uh, he'll, <laughs> he'll come around eventually it starts Baby with like steps. telling yeah it starts with telling one person then two people and then you then you you know you jump right, right in right I would like <laughs> to get him on there because you know it'd be more if that's who I had the encounter with so it'd be better to have him there to hear it word for word and validate each other so yeah absolutely maybe one day 
So if your sighting just happened about last year and you've been in MUFON since 2019, um, I mean, besides uh, Eric Von Daniken's book, did you have any type of interest in UFOs? Yeah, I mean, when I, I, when I was younger, I worked at a Boy Scout camp up in the Poconos, um, mm-hmm. and that's in Pennsylvania. I don't know where you guys are from. Where you got, are you West guys Coast, from? California. West yeah. Coast, okay. I'm Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So we have the Poconos, um, the Pennsylvania Poconos here, and I worked at a camp up there as a counselor, and I would help uh, young Boy Scouts and counsel them. And um, when I was up there, we seen a bunch of stuff in the night sky. I mean, because up there, it's more clearly than in the city, and you can see a lot farther. And you, you could always see the stars and the planets perfect. And you would see stuff up there all the time. And we didn't, we always had no idea what it was, but we didn't know there was somewhere you can go and report them, you know, mm-hmm. let alone mm-hmm. have a community to talk about it with. So yes, I have seen stuff prior to that. That's so do you think that your need for wanting like a community to talk about these kind of situations with is what kind of fueled you wanting to start a podcast and being more involved in this community? Yeah. And then, um, There was just a lot of different cases that I found that no one was talking about that are just as big as Roswell and just as big as the um, Lonnie Zamora case from a police officer witnessing a UFO. Um, And no one talks about this stuff. And that's the kind of history and cases and news that I want to bring to the podcast to bring awareness to this stuff. Um, And that's why I like to write a lot of articles on my on my website. You know what I mean? That, too, Mm -hmm. because I can't get everything on the podcast. So I had the website for everything else. Um, And I just like to bring attention to the stuff that no one even hears about. Yeah. So out of all the cases that you've looked into, what is your favorite go to case that you like to talk to people about with? Um, I um, on my website and. I did an episode with him. Um, I did my own investigation on the side with this uh, this guy, Michael. Um, he came forward to me about two months ago, three months ago now. Um, and it's the first time he's ever told his story. It happened back in 1989. He's 60-something years old now. Um, and he went into great detail about uh, he had uh, time. There was some kind of time stop, time freeze. Um, he's seen two different objects in two different years. One was in 89, one was in 96. Um, he was scared to tell anybody about it, you know, until recently with the government coming out with the UFO report mm-hmm. and, and a gun stating that these things were real. Um, he felt comfortable and he came to me to investigate it and to help him out with the case. Um, it's episode five of my podcast. And then I also wrote an article on the uh, website about him. Um, but his every the details in his case are phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's the case that everybody would like to investigate. You know, it's the ones that you like to hear about. Um, and I'm going to have him back on the show again, because we want to really go through the details of everything and try to get him some answers of what happened. Uh, we did get him some at the beginning things that he didn't even realize, um, both encounters that he had were kind of in sync with each other. Mm-hmm. They both happened the same way, um, and at the same way, same kind of ship, uh, craft that he was seeing. Um, mm-hmm. so we did get some, um, uh, comparisons to the other two and, uh, put them together. And he finally was like, he had that wow moment you know, so it was pretty cool, but we're going to get back into it and look further, farther into the case. Well, I think that sometimes you have to continue to talk about it because me and Brie, even to this day, have revelations about things years later. We like talk about something and we're like, wait a second. Oh my gosh. And then (laughs) it's like an epiphany happens. So I think that sometimes you have to keep telling these stories. You have to keep talking about your experiences because the more that you're doing it, the more it makes sense to your brain, the more you're starting to recognize these patterns and these things like that. So it's good that you want them to come back because I'm sure that you're just going to find out more things that you didn't realize the first time around. Yep. And that's what I do with my cases. That's what I do with my cases when for move on too. Mm -hmm. when I, when I do, um, do the witness interview, I always go back a couple of weeks later and try to ask them some more questions because when they first tell you everything, they're not remembering all the details. You know what I mean? There's times where I go back and I find out, oh, well, this happened. You didn't tell me that before. And then that helps with the investigation and then looking into other different things that I can look into. So it's yeah. definitely a big part of doing investigations. And how many investigations have you done with MUFON so far? Uh, um, I would say six to nine with MUFON. Mm-hmm. Um, this this month has been the most busiest month that I've, mm-hmm. I've had since I started. Um, I think I did four of them just this month. So, um, and they're still coming in. So, and that's Any one good of the ones this month. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of them, a couple orb sightings. One of the orb sightings that I just recently did, um, she was seen it going in erratic motions. Um, it was about the size of a baseball. She said it went behind the trees. And when it came out, it was 
probably a basketball size or bigger. Mm. So it had changed shape right before our eyes, did erratic motions. Um, I looked at every possible thing I can look of. Um, I looked at the planets that were out that night, all the satellites. Um, the only thing it could have been is a drone, maybe with the different lights coming on, or it was an actual warp. So I had to put it as a UAV on identified area vehicle. Mm. So, you know, you can't always get all the answers, but you get pretty close. You know what I mean? I try to do my best and look into yeah. everything to the fullest. You know what I mean? So, and do you find that you're getting a lot of cases that are like, are they being super time consuming or does it seem pretty easy to like, uh, like right off the bat, like, oh, it's not this planet. Oh, it's not this satellite. Can you do that kind of stuff pretty quickly? Certain things. Yeah. If they, especially if they have video and photos of the object, um, because MUFON does do a really great training program, which I was really thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, they, certify, they certify in astronomy, um, space mm -hmm. exploration, um, case disposition into investigations. They make you take three one-hour courses. Plus, you got to take a 100-question exam uh, with an 80 or higher to pass. Um, wow. So, so you, 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 you get all the knowledge before mm -hmm. you become an investigator and they want you, they don't want just anybody off the street coming in saying, I can investigate something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you get these cases and after you've been through the first one or two, you start to catch things and, you know, you can start to see that this is a certain thing or this is possibly this. And you can look into that as, you know, as you look into it. So. And have you seen any kind of like, um, cause I'm assuming you, you tend to look at the ones that are in your area, right? So do you see like right. a lot of similarities between some of these cases Like the more and more you're investigating them? Are you starting to see kind of like more and more things that are the same throughout these stories? Yeah. Well, a lot of the photos that people take, um, I don't know why it's just every time someone takes a photo of a UFO, they all kind of look similar, like an orb or you can't really see mm -hmm. the wings or any propulsion systems. And so you kind of get that and you kind of think drone right away, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's the camera kind of fogging, uh, the photo up. So it's an airplane or some kind of aircraft that we can identify. Um, and that happens a lot. Uh, but people are interested in knowing what, what these things are. And if I can give them an answer, I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? If I could figure out exactly what it is. And I don't know how many times I've been, people have messaged me so far and thanked me for looking into their cases. You know, people just want that verification. They want someone to help that them. And, validation. And, yeah. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. They need that. And no one else does that. You know what I mean? So that's why yeah. I enjoy the job. So. What are some instances where you've come across cases where you they weren't being explained by, you know, UFOs and UAPs and things like that? That would be the war cases probably are like the hardest to try to identify, um, mm -hmm. especially when there's a description saying that it's moving erratically, unlike any other aircraft. Um, it's not you check you check all the planets, you check satellites and nothing is matching up with that. Mm -hmm. um, those are the ones that really give you the, the thought that these are possibly real ufos have you come Definitely. across swamp ga gas by any chance i have not <laughs> especially in the city of philadelphia i don't no swamp gas really, no swamp <laughs> any ball lightning uh ball lightning no i have oh, i've good. had i've had um searchlights in the sky mm. someone seeing them in the day it was actually six abc news station helipad ah. they had their lights that were searching in the sky and he he didn't see the beams from the the ground to the sky he saw all the he was seeing was the circles in the uh, sky going like that and i had to look it up on google earth find out what was in the, in the area come to find out uh, six abc telemundo was right there um and they had their <laughs> helipads and they were landing helicopters that night so that's crazy <laughs> yeah. what about people that just kind of i mean have you come across any kind of far out people where you feel like you have to um kind of get a feel for is this person being honest or not because I, I feel like people that aren't in this community just see people that believe or think that they've seen UFOs is kind of crazy or just want attention so is that also a part in your investigations yeah I associate this is weird but I associate more with the people on the west coast on your side mm -hmm. with MUFON than I do with my own people over here it's just the way it worked out um, and them over there they get a lot of hoaxes um, they get a lot of people trying to get attention, throwing stuff up. CGI is a big thing now because we have the technology and the computers That's to do like, so. Why? Yeah, I don't get they, I don't so understand. Weird. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. And they even have apps now that you can fake UFO sightings mm -hmm. on the phone. So it's really, it's super easy to do. You know what I mean? And people are doing it. And you don't get people that just hoax things one time. We get, we get um, 
career hoaxers mm -hmm. that will report something would say in my, Pennsylvania in my area and they'll report something in New York and Maryland and and then you got to kind of search the database to see and and, and cross point them to make sure that this isn't happening you know what I mean so you got to pay attention to that because people do want the attention today yeah it's just I, like why though because people that have experienced this it's not the kind of attention I think when people think of attention, they think it's like a good thing, but I think we all know that it's not necessarily a good type of attention. It's not like you don't gain anything from that. So I just don't understand why people go out of their way for that kind of attention. Cause you're automatically just kind of seen as crazy and, and weird. And it's nothing, right. you know, it's not like, Oh, you're so cool. It's just, no, you know what it is, Brie fucking disinformation agents. It's just, it baffles me whenever I see things I like that, even on Instagram or, you know, TikTok anywhere. I always come around those, those fake UFO videos. Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's so many of them. And they always have like so many likes and shares. And I'm just like, but are people really like, I don't understand like what about this makes you want to be like, oh my God, look at this. Right. It, sometimes oh I find it hard when people have video and photo evidence because of that misconception of like being able to use Photoshop and CGI and stuff. So it's like, I feel like sometimes these photos and video evidence are so much of a wash because realistically at the end of the day, it's very hard unless you were there and you took that picture to really know these days, whether or not it, it is what it is. Right. 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 And my whole thing is like, instead of faking it, just join the community and get involved mm -hmm. and do something about it. Yep. You ain't got to fake a UFO sighting just to get involved with us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can come to the conferences, get to meet people, network, join a, join, join an organization, get, yeah. you know what I mean? Do what you got to do. There's, there's other ways that you can, that you can be a part Absolutely. of this. Absolutely. And you know? so many speakers, so many um, researchers, authors, so many of them haven't even had their own sighting mm -hmm. and they're right. honest about it. So right. it's like, why do you feel like you have to fake having your own sighting? Cause that doesn't really put you anywhere. Right. You know, yep. it's just so weird. I and it's so interesting to... that you say that more in the East coast, that people are out there trying to, to get more attention and hoax. Like, that's so strange to me that that's more of an East Coast thing. West Coast. To no, West he has Coast. West, Coast. West Coast. Oh, I thought you were mm -mm, saying mm -hmm. it was East no. Coast <laughs> that was getting more. Oh, West Coast oh, wow. got all the fucking crazies out here in LA, you know? <laughs> but I also oh, feel like too, also in like, I mean, I don't know about your area in particular, but like the New York area, like I would imagine there's not as many hoaxes because there's actually not as many people doing reports, even though there's more of a population there, you have not so many people looking up in the skies, you have all these buildings right. and these bright lights and there's a lot going on there. Light so, pollution. Exactly. So more out here on the West coast, although we do have big cities, big cities are in the middle of these huge, vast areas of lands right. and mountains and beaches and stuff out here. So you have a lot more of these open spaces and places for people to right. go to, to see these kind of, you know orbs or whatever it is yep and i think more of the people that try to hoax stuff are people that really don't have too many friends they're mm. a little lonely you know what i mean yeah and they see like people like travis walton and whitley streber that get all the attention that have written books that get movie mm -hmm. deals and they want that you know what i mean but there's other ways you know what i mean you don't have to do that anymore it's just you know it is what it is though I agree. So no. you probably come across more of like sightings and um, trying to get to the nuts and bolts side than experiencers, I'm assuming. Right. I do. I deal with more like CE ones and, and borderline twos, sometimes full twos. But um, uh, we have an, uh, the ERT, which is the Experiencer Resource Team. Mm -hmm. um, and that's headed by Kathleen Martin, um, the Betty and Barney Hill niece. Mm -hmm. um, and she runs that with 66 other investigators and like six or seven psychologists and, and some doctors. Um, and they can go on to MUFON.com and fill out a, um, a sheet of 30 questions and it'll rank them and then it'll send them to the right person that can give them the right help. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. It's brand new. Um, we had our new director take over. I don't know if mm -hmm. you heard about the last one. Mm -mm. Um, Jan Harzan, he was... Um, he got caught. He got in a lot of trouble for kitty porn, unfortunately. <gasps> that tends to happen no. to some people in uh, yeah. certain positions. Yeah, and um, he kind of gave Mufon a really bad name because he was the head guy and everything. Yeah. Um, but oh, now we have awful. our new director. Yeah, it, it was really bad. And a lot of people worked with him one on one, and they were real disgusted. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Chase Kolecki. Um, mm -hmm. She's one of the big time investigators of Mufon. She was just mm -hmm. talking to me the other night about how disgusted she was, you know, working yeah. with the guy. 
Um, but our new director that took over, Dave McDonald, he's put, he's opened up another office. He, we have one in California. Now we have mm -hmm. one in Ohio. Um, mm -hmm. He created helped create the ERT team. Um, we also improved our dive team. Uh, we opened up our full-time lab that we could do DNA, fingerprints, um, all that kind of stuff. And uh -huh. it's really cheap to get the, the, uh, the product. It's like 10 bucks for a whole kit. Um, so wow. you do fingerprints, DNA, and we send it in and we have our scientists. I actually got a full uh, preview of the entire inside of the lab yesterday during the MUFON uh, comp, uh, meeting. That's cool. Um, it was the first time. And to see all the, to see everything was really, it was nice to actually see that we have this, you know, yeah. we can actually get answers that way if something big happened. So it was now, neat. How many uh, like MUFON um, investigators do you have just in your area? Um, so what happens is, is Pennsylvania has an overall state director mm -hmm. and then it's broken down into, I think, nine or 10 sections mm -hmm. and each section has a section director. Mm -hmm. And then that section director has a, a couple different field investigators under them. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know in my section, it's me and I think two or three other investigators plus my section director. Yeah. So there's a total of probably like 10 to 15 investigators in Pennsylvania altogether or something like that. Yeah. I don't know, might more than that. I'm not exactly sure the full number, but I know my area. You know? And you're still getting that many cases a day. So are, is that to yes. assume that like all of you are pretty much getting those kind of numbers every day? Well, the, every month we get a st statistic of every state. Um, I get those is, emails, is, I read them. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons I joined Pennsylvania and that's where I live because Pennsylvania is always in the top 10 every month. Mm. um new fork has its ranked seventh in total sightings all time um so it's a bit of a hot spot and i recently um got one of my papers published um looking Ooh. into pennsylvania um and how much of a hot spot it is with some of the top cases all the stats and the numbers that are you know has helped create make pennsylvania a hot spot so it's pretty cool. neat what's pennsylvania's yeah. most famous ufo case kexburg Ketsburg, that's right. The Ketsburg UFO incident. Um, and that was that was a whole big thing. I mean, you got people thinking it's a satellite, a spy satellite, a UFO. But the way it was described, the military came in so quick and took everything and then mm -hmm. said it was nothing. So they covered it up real quick. And um, whenever that happens, you got to think it's obviously something important or they wouldn't be doing it. I 100% agree Absolutely. with that. Mm -hmm. So then when you get when you hear about a case, do you have access to that sooner than the rest of us do? If we're like on, you know, moveon.com, do you get those cases first? And so then you can go and actively look at them. Yeah. Any case that's reported from that day on, I can look at it. Um, but like, so does the, it get sent to you guys first if it's in your area or is it just immediately online? It goes to the state director first immediately. Mm, gotcha. It gets sent to them and then they, they assign it to whatever section it needs to go to yeah yep. that makes sense i reported mm -hmm. a case to move on once and i like didn't know what to expect and then it took a while and i was like oh till they called me and i was like oh <laughs> shit they're calling me <laughs> that's cool that's cool i'm glad yeah, you're it was. yeah you get it was some cool. you get some certain places that are really lacking help um so some states don't have as many um mm -hmm. that's what all my state's pretty well around it we don't yeah. have any any holes or gaps in anywhere in the state but you get certain areas that don't only have one or two people and a state director and they have to do the into all the sightings for that entire state and they get a little overwhelmed yeah um, we have we have a time response so if it's a ce1 i have to respond get in touch with the witness within 72 hours mm -hmm. if it's a ce um to, what did I say? So yeah, CE1, 72 hours, CE2, 48, and it's the E3, 24 hours. I have to respond. Um, so there is a time frame wow. that you're supposed to hear back from an investigator when you report a sighting. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on how much work they have and where, you know, they mm -hmm. try to get to you as fast as possible. But, you know. So what are some yeah. of the states that need more researchers or investigators? I would say probably, I know San Antonio, Texas. Really? I know, I know they need help. I just Texas talked of to- all places. We'll have to tell Bobby. Yeah, I just talked to uh, one of the head people over there. Um, her name's Tater. Um, Ooh, she love runs it. We love potatoes. Salad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Our her name- <laughs> <laughs> um, She said it's only her and one other person right now. 
That's crazy because Texas is a pretty big state and they have a lot of sightings there. So it's like interesting to think that like more people are not involved there. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought there'd be a lot of people, but she said recently a lot of people left um, and retired or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say it. But um, she said, yeah, they're really, they really need a lot of help. Dang. So, and you got to remember everybody's volunteering. We're, mm-hmm. we're paying out of our own pockets for this. We don't, we don't get paid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Say. It's about the research and it's about helping people. It's, you know, so. A lot of dedication. Yeah. Right. Tr- trust me. That's why we've been doing this for so many years. Right. Right. But still, you. we're not like you have 24 hours. Oh, yeah. No, we don't have that. <laughs> this, I'd be like, I'm not the best at that. So, mm-hmm. right. As long as you <laughs> contact be- the witness within that time, send them an email or a text message, you're good. You know, after that, you could, you could take up to three months with the case. But like, oh, I, saw, you I have saw. to contact the witness within that time. Yeah. What was the case that took you like the longest amount of time to look at? That was that recent ward case that went behind the tree mm-hmm. and did all that. I mean, I really wanted to figure out what that was. Yeah. And um, how long did that take you to like to come to your conclusion? It was five days before the three month period. Wow. OK. Yeah. And everything I, has I to be closed within three months. Like what happens if you get to the end of your three months and you don't have any answers? Like then you just you just you're it's concluded you're getting, as you don't know if you're getting yeah, isn't that, that unknown. Close, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it would be unknown. Um if you, I would try it, like, if I was having that much trouble with it, you're supposed to go and talk to your section director and see mm-hmm. what their opinion would be of it. They would read over the case and give you a little help with it. Um, unless you're really just like, like I was trying to do fine, look into every nook and cranny. Yeah. Um, you know, it all depends on the situation. Now, do you ever investigate like old UFO cases as yes, well we in that. addition? No, yep. I mean like you personally though. Me personally? Yes. Just the ones that I'm doing with the dude Michael looking uh-huh. back in his case. That's that's 1989 and 1996. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's a long time ago. Now, do you find that you're able to use a lot of the things that you learned from MUFON to help investigate his story, even though it's so far back? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I I wouldn't know half the stuff if it wasn't for MUFON. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They to to all the certifications you have to get and all the teaching and I mean. It's, it's a lot. It took a lot of time. Um, just the test alone took me four and a half hours. And I had to wow. take it twice because you have to get 80 or higher to mm-hmm. pass. You know what I mean? And uh, the first time I got a 75. Oh. And then I was like, you know what? I got to really look into this. And I really looked into it and got 91 the second time. So See, I was there, like, you right, there we go. <laughs> but it's, oh it's it's no joke that the, the how, how much they school you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that helps with every case that you do, whether it's new or old. You know what I mean? And they give you a whole bunch of different tools. I could take a photograph and run it through this uh, uh, analyst program. And it will tell me how many pixels are there. Mm-hmm. And anything was added to the photo. So I can tell if it's CGI. And then I get the date that it was originally done. I can see how many times it was saved over. Mm-hmm. So that's MUFON crazy. does provide all this kind of stuff. And we get Flight Radar 24. So you can go back in time and see what flights or balloons mm-hmm. or anything that was flying over your area. Uh, we have a satellite um, app that you can go and look into to see what satellites were over you. Um, we have the Earth one that looks at constellations, stars, planets, yeah. all that time. So it, it's it's cool that you can really look pretty decently into a case, you know what I mean, and get an idea of where it is. So. Yeah. So this is a lot of investigating, but how, would you say that it's affected your life at all, um, like emotionally, spiritually, anything like that? It's actually made my life a lot better because this has finally found something that I am very passionate about <laughs> and I enjoy doing as a job. Um, I'm doing this full time. I have the opportunity to do it full time right now for another mm-hmm. year or so. Um, wow. So this has actually opened up a lot of doors for me um, and I've gotten to meet a lot of people um, and I enjoy getting cases. So if I was getting flooded with cases, I'd be just as happy as I am now. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm working on two or three different cases now and I'm cool with that. Um, and I'm willing to help anybody that needs any help. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I actually put a post out earlier on, on Twitter, you know, and I did it on my website and Facebook. If anybody ever needs help with investigations, I offer that too to regular people. So, yeah, you know, I try to get involved as much as I possibly can. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's a passion for you and you mm-hmm. feel right. like it's like it's a fulfilling a purpose in you. Right. It's That's woken very me up important. to want to, you know, I never had such drive to do something before. Um, and this, this fills that. So yeah. now have you ever been to any UFO conferences before? Yep. I went this year to the Pennsylvania one. Um, uh-huh. 
it was the best time I had in a long time yeah. <laughs> getting to meet people. Um, people from back in the day that were in the air force that have chased UFOs were there. Um, mm-hmm. this really old guys, like 90 something years old. Um, he worked, he was a highly decorated guy in the air force and, um, he chased two UFOs in his lifetime, okay. uh, work. I think he was at Wright Patterson mm-hmm. and, oh. um, he was also working at the 509th bomb <laughs> group in Roswell. Roswell. So he was at the, yeah. the two hot spots when Roswell right. happened. Exactly. And he was a pilot there. And, um, you know, he said he did chase him twice, both times he was unable to catch him, but he did see the one the one time. Um, and to hear to hear this coming from somebody like that, that's highly decorated, an old timer in the military, not afraid to come out and talk about it was just mind blowing. You know what I mean? Now, you're ex-military, too, correct? Yes, correct. And Army National have, Guard. And you didn't have any sort of experiences, no sort of sightings, nothing like that. Never had anyone no. else when, that you were with see anything? no no it just made me very familiar with all the airplanes and Mm -hmm. all the vehicles that we have that that really helps now when you're looking into cases so yeah but yeah nothing really what do you think about these videos that uh jeremy corbell has come out with off of these navy (laughs) ships what are your as someone who you know is familiar with these kind of videos and things like that like what do you what is your like analysis of them i'm not totally totally bought on the whole pyramid ufos that are swarming ships with flashing lights on them mm-hmm. right away that just looks like a drone to me i don't know and that's what a lot of other people are saying and when you really look at the photographs like they get the word pyramid now everyone didn't know where that word came from mm-hmm. that came from the actual sailors that took the video on the ships that seen these things in a 3d way and it looked like a, a pyramid mm-hmm. they actually right because i'm like that's a triangle i was right. confused that's what everybody was saying it's a triangle what are you talking about pyramid um, Richard Dolan confirmed this on Jimmy Church's radio station one day. So I got that information. Um, and the way they look, they say they're being swarmed by these things and they're all flashing lights and they're kind of like in motion, not really flying too fast. You could have sent a jet up to go look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of feel like it, they're possibly some kind of drone special project that we're working on. And they're trying to see how our Navy would react to them by mm-hmm. sending them over. Mm-hmm. Now, the Tic Tac and all that, I completely don't believe that was ours. That, I can't see anybody surviving or being inside of something like that, moving the way it did, the way David Fravor describes it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pyramid ones, I'm not not too sure about. And what's crazy is I really trust George Knapp's work. Mm-hmm. George Knapp, he, I mean, the work that he's done with Bob Lazar and just being in the field in general and the people he's interviewed and for him to back it up, it kind of makes you question it. Okay. Is it real though? You know what I mean? So you really, it's hard. It's, it's really hard, especially when you don't have the evidence in front of you to look at. Well, and I think sometimes that happens too, is like with me and Bree, someone who have been like researching and looking into this stuff for some, for so long, sometimes I feel like you get a little bit jaded and sometimes it's easy to like we find ourselves sometimes like looking at things like "Mm," but then we have to think to ourselves too like wait 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 wait. we started this because people thought about our stories that way so we can't continue to keep thinking about other people's stories as possibly not being true we have to maintain that idea that like literally anything is possible you know what i mean right right Right. So it's a hard, it's a very weird, thin line to walk because we do like one of the things we do on our podcast is like factor sci-fi and we factor sci-fi things and we have no right to do any of that. It's our own opinion of whether or not we think it's true. But, you know, there's people out there who there's some stories that I just can't get behind, but other people are like so gung ho about it. They're like, no, I know for Mm -hmm. a fact that this is real. This is so true. But then I look at it and I'm kind of like, if you say so. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I trust Jeremy Corbell. You know, I mean, just as a person, right? Um, but I look everything else that he's come out with. <laughs> everything else that he's the man's come out with, I I think has been pretty spot on. You're just not into he's the pyramids. Um, just the he's pyramid. He's a cool ones. dude, mm-hmm. and he takes everything really seriously. He really does, and yes. he yes, does his absolutely. homework. But I think at the end of the day, we have to separate. You know. A, it doesn't always matter if we like love someone and we trust their work and everything. We just have to, you know, does it sit right with you kind of thing, right. you know? Right. And that makes it hard. Cause you're like, I trust you, but you know, should I take your opinion over mine? No. Right. 
And people make mistakes in this field. So it happens. I mean, you can't always be 100% right on everything all the time. You know, there are mistakes that happen. And his work prior to this has been great. You know what I mean? And he's a part of the disclosure process. Mm -hmm. um, he's big in the media. He's bringing attention to the subject, which I love. And anybody that does that, I love. Yeah. Um, I don't, he's like you know, single-handedly done it too. Like, like, like no one right. else has been yeah, over the past few this. months. It's been him hands down. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And people are, are scrutinizing him for that saying, yeah. Oh, well, how come it's all Jeremy for a bell? Da, 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 da. But you know, at least he has the guts to come out here and do it and, and get on these it. TV exactly. shows. Mm -hmm. He's getting stuff from, from intelligence agencies and he's releasing it to the public. He's sharing about it. You know what I mean? What else do you want the man to do? I mean, mm -hmm. doing everything he possibly can. But that's um, like with any with anybody who is who comes out with any sort of information, there's always going to be that criticism behind it. There's always going to be these people who are trying to tear you down and like make it so that your information is not as important as it is. And you know what? Right. Maybe you don't believe some of the videos he puts out, but I will shit talk Tom DeLong right now and say <laughs> he didn't show us anything and he no. talked all his shit. And yep. had his whole goddamn company. So at least Jeremy was coming the out first here backing video. up his stuff. But, he, but nothing other than that. Academy was the but first video. nothing other than that. But that's the video right. and the picture but, on every single article. Everything after that they that. do. But nothing after that. Nothing. But He's that like, was oh, the I most substantial. Material. I'm going to release a documentary. Nothing. That's but true. his tour, his band is touring right now. <laughs> I mean, I would pay to go see that. I don't know if I'd go see his meta materials. I don't yeah, think I've got to it either. <laughs> now, with this UFO government report going out, as someone who is an investigator, what did you think about the report? So I thought that there should have been more information, in it, of course, but that's what everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. um, but the information that was in that report was extremely helpful to the public and to the people that have no idea about UFOs and the people that are skeptics. Mm -hmm. It gave confirmation. It showed us what kind of evidence the military has, not just witnesses, it's sensors, it's gun cameras, it's radar from multiple different areas. Um, I, I thought that was great. Um, they also said, um, you know, for the first time that they can't explain 143 of 144 cases, yeah. which the military never does. One was a balloon out of all of them, mm -hmm. you know? So I thought that was cool. Um, it was very short. Um, the last two pages were bullshit. The front page was bullshit. So you can't even count them. Um, so that really brings it down to what, six pages? Yeah, so, was six pages of re light reading. Well, double yeah. spacing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what it did, it just brought attention to the, to the, to I the like subject, what you said though. What you, know? you said is, is it brought attention to people who don't know about UFOs exactly. because I think that's very important because one of the things that as much as I love people talking about UFOs, I'm so fucking sick of people talking about this goddamn report because I'm just so over it. Like <laughs> the, the government has come out so many times and made comments about them researching UFOs. So I just right. I don't understand why we have to keep like bashing it over people's heads over and over again. Like either they listen or they don't. Like, why do we have to keep force feeding people this information? Right. We don't. We don't. We have enough of us in this community anyway that are that are working and doing the right work and getting the information out that we really don't need anything to do with those people you know what mm -hmm. i mean if they want to continue at this point to be a skeptic and that's on them they're choosing just not to believe at this point after the pentagon and the report came out so but that did help a lot of people like everyone says you woke someone up or you, you know try to wake people up i've done it in the past couple of weeks with a couple of different people in my family and friends mm -hmm. um because they've seen the report come out because they heard the pentagon saying this stuff yeah so it's helping to wake those people up that have no idea or have questioned things before. So it did, did do some good. people come to you now? Your family? Does your family come to you now? And they're like, hey. I'm the go-to guy in the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, mm -hmm. If they want to know something about it or if they have questions, then it's funny how they always bring it up. They always kind of like, they're unsure of how to talk about it with me, you know what I mean? Because they've never talked about it before with anybody. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like slowly bring it up into like a, a, an odd conversation and squeeze it in there. And then once I hop on it and start talking to them they're like yeah 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 you know and then they get into it so it was it was cool it was neat to show people the information and to show like what's going on who's investigating it how long it's been around for and they're just mind blown by it because they have no idea they really have no idea about this you know so do you see something else yeah. happening something next I feel like we're on a trajectory here mm -hmm. it's only going to keep happening keep speeding up there's got to be another I don't know if it'll be a report, an announcement, probably another will, video from there Jeremy. There will be another report. Something. Um, because on the front, it, does, it did say 
I, I try to point this out to everybody it said preliminary assessment. So that's one of many to come. Um, that's just mm -hmm. the first one. And um, we got all these representatives and congressmen and senators that are coming out of the woodwork now supporting the disclosure process and putting things in, in the works like um, you got the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Kathleen Hicks. She has now put in place that all military people have to report their UFO sightings within the two weeks occurrence. So they're making it okay for military people to report these things. You got um, Andre Carson, who is trying to get a hearing put in place for the UFO disclosure process. Um, you got Adam Schiff coming out of the woodwork saying this has never been um, this has never been us and that there most likely is something to this whole situation. You have the chief NASA scientist and his scientists coming out saying that the government needs to give them the classified report. So they can research better. They yeah. can actually do a scientific report yeah. on this. If you really want this done, give us the work. They're getting sick and tired of being put around and, and saying, oh, well, look, go talk to NASA. Well, NASA don't have no information to give you. And now their own scientists are getting sick and tired of it. So they want the real thing. If you're going to keep putting people to them, they want to scientifically have a real review about it. So, well, Gosh, can't someone leak the report? That would be so cool if someone could leak <laughs> the, the classified report. Yeah. It's like, what's in there? Do you think yeah, there's just to be, like hours? There has to be a few people in there too who like look at it every day and they're like, if I just I? accidentally yeah. slip my Quick fucking finger, like a little like, oh, like a skirt, you know what I mean? Like there has to be some people in there who are just like. Absolutely. I, I'm assuming it's going to have to come out. Like there's somebody in there who's just like, like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what the protocol for being somebody who would be looking at this type of classified information, but I know for a fact that I would not be able to keep a secret and I would snitch a hundred percent if I saw some <laughs> shit like that. I'd be like, I just can't, I can't. There's just some things that you can't hold in. Right. Absolutely. No, for sure. I think they're trying to figure out a way to do it. You know, they just got to be careful with how they do it. If they're going to release it, you know? they keep tabs on everybody in the government. So, I mean, they have to be careful how they release an email or, you know, anything like that. So, but I, I would hope somebody would release it soon or yeah. in the future sometime, you know. Mm, what are the motives, right? What are the yeah. motives? That's what, what are the, the motives? What, and that's not just that. What are the motives and what, what is, you have to remember anything the government comes out with is always for a purpose and a reason and a message, right? So like, what is it that they're like, what information are they trying to get across by telling us about this stuff now? Like, right. what is it at this? Because it's very obvious that they've known about it for a long time. Absolutely. So what is it about like today's time? Like what narrative are they trying to put out? Like, again, because they're really shoving this stuff down people's throat right now. Yes, like this, it is so much in the news cycle. So many people, when I tell them that I host a podcast about aliens now, like so, so many more people who before thought that I was weird and crazy are like, wait, what? Huh? Right. They want to hear it. What's listen. it called? Can I listen to it? Are you on YouTube? <laughs> like everyone is so interested in it now. And right. I just, I, it makes me wonder the motives of like, what, why, what's happening? Right. I've said the same thing. Why after 76 years are you coming out now? What do you Since think? Roswell, what do you think? The only other thing I can think of is they're preparing us for something or they're or something is going to happen that they know that they can't stop and it's going to happen no matter what. So That's they think slowly too. start yeah. incriminating everything. Yeah. To I, think, us now. I think either some type of an event or something is going to happen that they're not going to have a control over. So they're trying to control as much as they can up until right. that point. And then fingers be crossed because they know that once that happens, <laughs> it's out of their hands at that point. So they're trying to like sway everybody's opinions and ideas in a certain way so that when it does, whatever it is, right everyone is already a little brainwashed you know what i mean Drink the fluoride in your water kind of shit yep how exciting I though i know really one I'm day on the news it. and like they're here they're, they're just here. like all in the sky it's like signs when they're just like popping up <laughs> everywhere yep and they're like awesome. hey we told you yep we told you absolutely not our seen fault. That. i'm like please Twitter. take me with you <laughs> thinking about that all the time you know just show me show me yourself i want to see you know um, but I was on Twitter earlier and someone had posted a video and it was this, uh, this alien race and they're coming in their ship and they're coming to planet Earth and they're coming through and they get stuck on a fly thing. They're like that little big. And they said, nope, not this year, uh, America, you know, and it, was, it was really cool. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it was Twitter good. is a cool place. We how we got in contact with Jesse was on Twitter. Me and him were kind of going back and forth and talking to each other and some stuff. I have these. Mo I love Twitter. I have these moments where I can go like three or four days hard on Twitter nonstop. And then like two weeks, absolutely no contact. Oh, I know. Like it's so it's I so much. 
much of a beast. Like you either are sucked into it or you cannot yep. open the app. There's no in between. Absolutely. I find myself stuck on there for hours sometimes. My dad mm-hmm. will say, you know how long you've been on your phone for? You know, and I'm just looking over stuff, scrolling, 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 yep. liking, liking, comment, liking, scrolling, scrolling. And then I get on Facebook and I got to do the same thing there. You yep. know what I mean? And then I'm sharing my stuff, my podcast, my, you know, my website, all the articles that I write. But it's nice because it's a a nice big community for it now. If you tried to do this shit five, seven years ago, it would have been a completely different response than you doing it now. You would have had people blocking you, making weird comments about you. Like now people are so much more perceptive to the information. It's it's a good time to try to talk about fucking space aliens. Let me tell you. Yes, it is. That's true. We're lucky. It really is. Yep. All right, guys, we, this is going to be our episode for today. I had so much fun. We definitely have to talk yeah. more because I feel yes. like that was, it was like a quick 45, you know what yes, I mean? It was. We it could have gone on is. for so much longer, <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for listening. We love you all. And we will see everybody next time. Bye. Right. Thank, thank you, you, Jesse. Thank yep. you so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you guys. Have all right. You guys, night. we'll talk to you later tonight. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.